How often do you take out your camera to take the picture of that pretty scene or the moment that you just really wanted to capture? Have you ever thought, though, about how much time went into the day in that camera or to the accessibility that you now have? As a photographer, I have thought a lot about this. There was a time when only the rich could afford to even get their pictures taken. Now, pretty much everyone has access to a camera. I'm going to take you on the journey from heliographs to tin prints to the film cameras to where we are now with digital photography. So first, heliographs. I know a lot of us probably aren't familiar with the term. It's all right, I wasn't either. According to Mary Bellis, who is an academic author, the heliograph would just kind of, it, the image, or the camera would take the image and display it onto a flat surface, but it wouldn't actually stay there. It would just, it'd fade as soon as the image went away, or the subject went away. But when Nisip in the year 1826 decided that he was going to take silver plates, coat them in asphalt, and expose them to light, all of a sudden he had images starting to appear. But there were two problems. The first problem was that the camera had to be completely still for eight hours, as the exposure for the asphalt needed that long to take on the image. Second problem was that when the light after the image was there hit the tin print, the image would disappear, fade, and become kind of a mess. Nisip began working with Louis Daguerre, and they started this process of finding a way to stabilize the image. When Nisip died, Daguerre carried on the process. Daguerre found a way to keep the image stable with silver plating and salt. Daguerre would work with Nisip's son, and eventually they found a way to stabilize the image. They sold their process to the French government in the year 1850. When they did that, it allowed other inventors access to see the process and how Daguerre found this way to keep the images stable. Now, after that, there was a man named George Eastman. George Eastman, for those of you who don't know, is the founder of Kodak. He felt inspired to create a camera for the everyday person. He did this by creating film cameras. The film cameras would take the image and store it on film. In fact, Kodak's slogan was, you take the picture, we do the rest. The reason that that was the slogan was because after it was on film, you'd have to send it to Kodak, and Kodak would send you back the image on like a paper. Edwin Land, in the year 1943, felt inspired by his daughter's question of why don't we have the picture right away. He decided to start the process of getting the pictures to you right then. He created a Polaroid camera. The Polaroid cameras kept all the process of the darkroom within the camera and the film itself. In, um, he unveiled this in 1947. The day that he did unveil it and he decided to sell it in stores, it completely sold out. He decided that he wanted to create a way that now there would be color, because everything was still black and white at this point. So he started working on this process. At first, when he started working on it, it was the same problem of the images were disappearing, you couldn't keep them in the light, they just weren't stable. He finally perfected his process and unveiled color film in 1963. As this paved the way for instant photography or digital photography. Now, digital photography um, allowed you the ability to just take the picture, have it right there, review it, whatever, and you didn't need to like shake it with the polar or like the Polaroid cameras. Since Stephen Sasson started the process of finding the digital photography in 1975. Stephen Sasson worked at Kodak. He was kind of the new guy, and they decided to just give him this kind of off-duty task of, well, we're in the computer age now, and maybe we should look at, you know, getting photographs to computers. It was such a small project, and nobody was interested in it, though. There was no need for him to even keep it a secret, because nobody thought that it would take off. In fact, when he presented it to a conference, he decided to display the images onto a screen. His images were somewhat blurry, and the conference people told him, that nobody would care and nobody would want it, as everyone was happy with film. Sasson tried to convince them that as computers got better, digital photography would too, and it would take off. However, nobody believed him. Kodak, in fact, said that they weren't even going to sell it. They were going to patent his idea to make sure that if anyone else decided to do it, they would get the money for it, but they didn't think there was a market for it. Canon was the first to show a viable digital camera, but then, you know, still nobody cared. In fact, the first time anybody actually sold a camera, a digital camera at least, was DICAM in the year 1990. It was a DICAM Model 1. Um, just as Sasson predicted, computers started to take off, and so did digital photography. 
In fact, by 2004, digital cameras had outsold film and digital was the norm. And the commercial success of the digital cameras was being recognized by Japan in this time. They thought that they needed to start implementing cameras onto people's cell phones to give them more accessibility. It wasn't until 2002, according to Digital Trends, that the United States even started to recognize that there were cameras being put onto cell phones. As the first camera phone in the United States was the Sanyo SCP-5300. It was sold in 2003. By that time, it was reported that as soon as that phone camera came out, that they were outselling DVD players. As phones continue to develop, so do the cameras within the phones. And now phone companies are competing to see who's got the best camera, which camera can do the most, and which one has the best images. Photography has become incredibly more accessible since the time of Daguerre and Niasip, when only the rich could even have their pictures taken. Now we almost all have access to a camera. Now that you have an idea of the history that went into building that camera, you can have more fun snapping your pictures. Thank you.